Hey, what's up, guys? It is Matt Salvatore, and today I am going to be discussing all the new sets, figures that Mega has been revealing. We have multiple sets, heroes, blind bags, and these are all going to be hitting shelves very soon, so we will all be able to get our hands on these, which is actually super exciting. So let's start off with the brand new uh, Halo blind bag series Three. Now this blind bag series has actually quite a few interesting figures in it that I think uh, I'm going to be very keen to pick up. New grunt design that we have from Halo Infinite, which we have now found out the name of, is the Mule. So it's obviously a grunt that carries weapons for the Banished, which is actually kind of neat. It's got some nice Banished decals and a nice little uh, paint applications on there that lets you know, hey, this... Uh, this grunts from the Banish. Uh, next up, we have the Brute Chieftain, the Camo Brute Chieftain. I love seeing camo figures of ones that we already have, so it's nice that we're going to be able to pair this blind bag figure with the Halo Heroes figure of the Chieftain that came in the previous Halo Heroes line. So I'm super excited about that, and we get a active camo grab hammer, which is actually pretty cool. Next up, we have the Ultra, which is a turquoise kind of color, if I had to describe it. it has a plasma repeater. It looks pretty interesting. I'm not too keen on the color, but I'm uh, happy to pick this up because I really love the mold design for this. Okay, so that takes care of the villains. And then going forward, the heroes of this blind bag series, we have a Spartan JFO which is a pink color. So if you like pink, the Spartan's definitely for you. We have a Spartan Hermes, which is an orange with uh, gray arms and knees, or lower legs. I love how the blue on his visor contrasts with the orange in his armor. He also comes with a gravity hammer, believe it or not. We'll see that these uh, same molds are used in later sets. Hint, hint. Next up, we have the Spartan Centurion, uh, metallic green with a bulldog shotgun. So... I always say, I love the green, love that military aesthetic, so I'm glad to see that in there. Lastly, on the figure front, we have the Infinite Marine, which is a female. So it's kind of cool that uh, Halo is mixing it up, and I would dare say that this is the same head sculpt that we will see in another set, which I will discuss later. Uh, I like the colors on some, not too keen on others. The mule is interesting, and I'm really excited to see what that looks like in gameplay. Lastly, on this blind bag series that I want to touch upon is the wasp. Now, we've been seeing a lot of the wasp in uh, Halo Infinite. We see it on the cover art, and we've also seen it later. We'll talk about it. A uh, new set. So, obviously, the wasp is going to be a focal point, much like the pelican and the banished phantom. So, I'm actually really excited. This little wasp actually looks pretty cool. Let's move on to the new... Halo Heroes line, we have Halo Heroes Series 14. Now this is interesting. So obviously we got another Chief. Um, yeah, uh, that's something that the community has been discussing lately, uh, another Chief. Um, this one looks like he has like tire tracks on his chest. So different kind of variations. Um, I kind of appreciate the Chiefs with different variations, especially because I do stop motion. Um, I like being able to show that something has affected his armor or his look. Obviously, I understand. I understand the complaint. Uh, next up on the Halo Heroes, we have the Halo Heroes Trailblazer. Now, the interesting thing about this Trailblazer, if you look at his armor, it almost looks pixely, kind of like the, uh, I don't know if you guys have seen G.I. Joe Rise of Cobra, but it has that weird kind of suit that takes pictures in the back and projects into the front and makes you invisible. I kind of get that kind of vibe with this one, that it's almost like it can change its color or adapt, which is actually kind of cool one. I'm excited to see if my theory is right. Next, we have a Mark 7 with a purple design. Cool little visor on top. Like I said, I'm not too keen on the purple pink colors that go with Spartans, but obviously people like to customize. Next up, we do have a Jackal Freebrooder. It is a new design, which we saw in the Warthog set from the Halo Infinite line. So we are able to get another Jackal here. This one, the shield looks like a little more TLC went into it. Uh, I really like the little button that they put on the outer portion of the shield. It makes it look like it's actually holding a center console, and then the shield is emanating from that plasma pistol with that. And lastly, for this Halo Heroes line, we have Hyperius. Now, Hyperius is, again, a lot of things have been talked about Hyperius, especially with what's on his right shoulder. It, to me, that looks like Locke's helmet. A lot of speculation has gone out, but Mega has said that it doesn't necessarily indicate that this is Locke's helmet. So, take that with a grain of salt. I think it is, but uh, I love the armor on Hyperius here. I love the little red decals on it. Looks really awesome. Uh, 
I think this is a improved design than what we had with the AA turret. I just like the more banish looking red colors. Okay. Really quick, we're going on to the Halo 20th Anniversary Figure Pack set, which comes with a bevy of figures, a plethora of figures of all different walks from Halo. And we discussed this on the show previously, but I just wanted to mention it again. A lot of cool figures here. I'm definitely looking forward to the Ratas Vadam figure. I think that's going to probably be my favorite. And the long-awaited Miranda Keys. I think we've given Mega enough shade on that one now. So it is happy to see these figures coming out. And I can't wait to get my hands on bunches of these ones. All right. Now, we are going to quickly transition over to the Wasp Onslaught. Now, this is actually a really cool set. Mega has done a Wasp before, but it was in the Halo 5 design. That also came with a Hunter, just like this one. So with this, this set, we get another Chief. We get a Marine, a Grunt, and a Hunter. Insert your joke about another Chief here. Okay, now we're moving on. The Shade Turret for this set looks flippin' awesome. It looks just like it is in the gameplay demo that we saw at E3. Um, I think the the orange coloring really just shines. I, this may just be one of Mega's greatest enemy turret designs ever. I think they nailed it. The wasp is cool. Uh, this one looks like it's a bit more, you know, a bit more compact, a little smaller than the previous design, which makes sense. You know, obviously, I don't think the Wasp is super huge, and I don't want it to be, like, you know, half the size of the Pelican. It's a one-man vehicle, so I'm super excited to to uh, get this in hand. This looks like a really nice little snapshot of what we will be encountering in Infinite. Really quick, I did want to touch on the two-in-one builds for the Wasp. Uh, both the Banished and the UNSC alternate builds that come with this both look like Hovercraft. Uh, the UNSC one kind of looks a little more low to the ground, maybe a low Hovercraft, whereas the Banished one seems to be a bit more of a smaller, lightweight Hovercraft. So these are pretty interesting. Um, I have to say these are probably my least favorite alternate builds of what we're going to be discussing today, but they're still pretty cool, so I am happy to check them out. And next up, we have the Red Helmet Escape set. This set's pretty interesting. It comes with a couple of things that at the time when this was revealed, we didn't know too much about. But now we actually have a little more information. So with this set, you get a Spartan Anubis and a Spartan Hermes. I gotta say, I love the color scheme on the Hermes. I love the red and the silver contrast. I think that looks excellent. Uh, the Anubis, we got some yellow and some gray. Or maybe a darker, dark gray. Uh, battle rifle and an SMG. Those look really interesting. Um, I think what really caught everyone's eye was the personal AI that we now see there. So I am super excited to see how that looks in Infinite and what all that entails. So I'm happy to get my hands on this set as well um, and break it down a little more. The Chopper Takedown. Now... The interesting thing about this chopper takedown is we get two named figures. We'll touch on the vehicle in a second. We have Eshram and Fred, Spartan 104. Now, Mega has come out and said that this is just a mashup set. It has Fred from Shadows of Reach and Eshram from Infinite, and they just paired it together to create a set. Now, if we took a second and put on our tinfoil hats, which I'm going to ask you to do right now, there is... A strong possibility that we will see blue team in Halo Infinite. Now, obviously, Halo Infinite was supposed to come out, but it was delayed. So these sets technically would have come out when Halo Infinite had already come out. So maybe it's not so much of a mashup. But as of right now, plausible deniability. Mega is going with that this is a mashup. Um, but I'm super excited about this set. I really liked the previous chopper design that came with a bubble shield cat and a brute. Really cool design. But this one has taken it to the next level and added in some nice rich banished red and some copperish gold. Uh, bullet holes, all the works. This looks like it is going to dominate the battlefield on infinite. And I'm really not looking forward to getting run over by these numerous times. But this build looks solid. It looks grizzled. It looks like the brutes just want to tear some stuff up. Also comes with a nice little mounted turret that looks like it can actually shoot the projectile, which is kind of cool. So, you know, you can have a little play feature there. The two-in-one builds for this is actually pretty interesting. It looks almost like a banished drone. Actually kind of cool. And then we have a mounted turret, which Fred is manning. So, looks like those two-in-one builds could really offer some play factors to it. Okay, now, last but not least, 
Mega has just released some images of this bad boy. 343 had released images and we got to see a little bit of this at the E3 presentation, but we are now looking at the Razorback. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. Now this Razorback is, is like a troop transport weapon holding juggernaut that can take a lot of punishment vehicle. So you want it to be able to hold a lot of figures. You want it to be able to hold a lot of weapons so that you can transport across the battlefield. Let's just really quickly run through the figures on this one. So we get another mule. Interestingly enough, that mule comes with a spike grenade. The brute, purple colored brute, actually really kind of interesting. Purple color, you don't really see too many purple colored brutes, especially because, you know, the banish, you know, color scheme is, is red. But we have a purple colored brute with red weapons. He's got a plasma caster. We got some shock rifles, a plasma pistol. Pretty cool stuff. So two enemies. And for our heroes, we have an, a marine. And we have a interesting looking Spartan. Hmm. This one is uh, Spartan Armor Hermes, which happens to be the Spartan armor of a particular member of a certain Spartan fire team known as Blue Team. So this is Kelly. But it doesn't have her numbers. 087, which in other sets that contain members of blue team, they have their numbers on it. So I'm guessing that maybe Mega has scrubbed the numbers off of that. Maybe not. I don't know. Probably another mashup, wink, wink, um, just for this uh, figure. But let's get back to the Razorback. Razorback looks awesome. Looks like the spiritual successor or ancestor or close cousin to the Warthog. The front of this build looks a little different than the actual images that 343 released. It looks a little slimmer and a little narrower, whereas I feel the Razorback that we saw at E3 kind of has a bit more of uh, an angled side to it. So this one looks a little sleeker on the front. Looks closer to a Warthog than the actual Razorback does, which is interesting. I like the little light on top. That's pretty cool. Um, I think one of the most important things about this design is how they want you to see holding troops. You can see that bar in the middle, so it looks like you're going to be able to attach your Spartan's hand to it, so that or Marine, and they're going to be able to hold the bar and just kind of be able to stay on. So very important that your troop transport can actually transport figures comfortably. You know, you don't want them jostling around in the background. <coughs> troop transport hog. Um, so we got to talk about the two-in-one build for the Razorback. I got to say, this is probably my favorite two-in-one build. Out of all the sets that we've gotten, I love it. We got it, it looks like a missile tower, or you could probably say it's a radio tower, but it looks like a missile tower to me, or like maybe a mounted machine gun that you could turn on. So that looks cool. And then it's got a nice little barrier with an antenna, a little couple more machine guns. It looks really cool. I think they really, and I love this because Kevin said that they wanted the two in one, you know, the second build to be completely different from the first build. And of course, a movable vehicle like the Razorback can then be transformed into barriers and mounted turrets. Really cool. Now, just really quick, there's a really neat looking mech suit sort of exo suit that the Brute is wearing. I'm super intrigued about that. All right, guys, that's just a quick, very brief run through of all the sets and figures and really cool little things that we are going to be getting from Mega very shortly. Be patient. I can't wait till these hit stores. What is your favorite? Which one do you think? But as for right now, this is Builds with Blocks. I'm Matt Salvatore, and as always, evolve. <laughs>